السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Praise be to Allah alone We all praise him and we seek his help Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves astray no one can show him guidance May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters Welcome to a new edition of Ask Huda. The phone numbers are area code 001-002-023855-248 or 249 and the email address is ask at huda.tv. Uh, may Allah bless you all. We'll uh, be more than happy to start taking your phone calls and concerns. While we're waiting for your phone calls, I've got just uh, uh, two pending questions. The first is from uh, Brother Muhammad from Sri Lanka. This question was tackled repeatedly in, in, in various ways. Uh, but this time he says, I'm from Sri Lanka and in my country people strictly follow the school of thought of Imam Shafi'i. May Allah have mercy on him. In uh, this school of thought, touching a woman breaks your uh, wudu ablution. So when Sri Lankans go for Hajj, they make intention to become Hanafis uh, at the airport so that they won't undergo the ruling of Imam al-Shafi'i with regards to touching women. And then when they finish their hajj, when they return, they change back to Shafi'i. Uh, may Allah guide us to what's best. Uh, this is uh, sad and funny, meanwhile. It's like, you know, these are different religions. And uh, we stated repeatedly before that these Imams were searching for the truth. If Imam uh, al-Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on him, was alive today and you've got the, found, the, the, the profound and the sound proofs that oppose his opinion, he would disregard his view right away. And he's done that repeatedly in his life. And that's why with Al-Imam al-Shafi'i himself, we've got Al-Qadim and Al-Hadith, which means his view in the old madhab and his view in the new madhab, based on the available references. Uh, as far as this particular view of touching a woman, and whether it breaks one's wudu or not, uh, this is basically due to the understanding of the scholars and particularly the interpreters of the Qur'an to two verses in the Qur'an. One is in Surah An-Nisa and the other is in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Both are talking about one term, which is awla mastum nisa In Surah An-Nisa, for instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ مَرْضَى أو على سفر أو جاء أحد منكم من الغائز أو لمستم النساء فلم تجدوا ما أنفت يمموا صعيدا طيبا فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم إن الله كان عفوا غفورا. That's verse number forty-three as I said. The other verse is verse number six of سورة المائدة which also mentions the term أو لمستم النساء. عبد الله بن مسعود and عبد الله بن عباس ترجمان القرآن من الله بيجيز وذم and uh, others of At-Tabi'een uh, all reported that the word awla mastumun nisa is a metaphor and it refers to the actual meaning here which is al-jima' or having a sexual intercourse so the ayah says that in case you are in a state of major impurity and there is no war there are four states that the ayah talked about in kuntum marda أو على سفر أو جاء أحد منكم من الغائط أو لا مستم النساء فلم تجد ما. So it talks about whether the minor or the major impurity. So they said أو لا مستم النساء in case you had an intercourse with your spouse, which right away it mandates a ghusl in order to lift the major impurity. So what happens if there is no water? فتيمم صعيدا طيبا. In this case, you may seek the tayammum by soaking your hands against the pure dust. Your hands and face that will lift the major impurity exactly similar to what the wudu does in order to lift the minor impurity and what the ghusl does in order to remove the major impurity. 
And Imam al-Shafi'i was one of those who took the term la mastum literally. A lamps in Arabic is to touch. A lamps is to touch. So he said a man touches a woman, even if this woman is his own wife, that would require him to perform wudu. He cannot in this case pray unless if he makes a new wudu. We will learn in a little bit whether this opinion is absolutely true or there is another opinion which is better and more correct after we take this phone call. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Wafa from Egypt. Wa alaikum, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, thank you, Sheikh, for all your helpful advices and answers. Thank you, Sister. Uh, please, I have two questions. Uh, first, you know, Sheikh, that uh, people um, often differ about the several issues. Uh, each one uh, adopts certain perspective, and each one thinks that his right is the rightest one. Uh, and the discussions uh, turn into anger, turn into fighting. For us as Muslims, what are the etiquettes of uh, disputing, especially in this time? Okay, uh, may I ask you what kind of subject that they're disputing? Um, uh, for, for us here in Egypt, um, uh, the political thing. Okay, you're talking about the political uh, affairs that's going on in most uh, of the Arab countries due to the Arab Spring. Yes. Okay. Uh, secondly, um, as the, the, the time of Hajj is coming soon, inshallah, uh, would you please uh, give an advice to all the people who uh, volunteer of giving the fatwa, mostly without knowledge. And for those who ask for fatwa from their friends, from their mates, um, that's all. Jazakumullah khair. For Hajj, you mean? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sister Rafa. Omar from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as-salam, Sheikh. How are you? How are you, Omar? Alhamdulillah, fine. Okay, I have three questions. Okay, one? Yeah, the first question is about kibber, arrogance. Yeah. Yeah, so I heard a hadith, and uh, I would like you to correct me if I'm wrong, uh, which states that uh, if a person has, a, has kibber equivalent to a grain, he won't un enter Jannah. So, is this true or not? Uh, and if it is, then how to keep away from it? And, uh, okay, uh, are you referring to the hadith which reads in Arabic, Man kana fi qalb, la yadkhulu al jannata man kana fi qalbihi mithqalu habbatin min kibr, wa dharratin min kibr. Is this the hadith you're referring to? That one who does have even an atom weight of arrogance yes. shall not enter paradise, right? Yes. Okay, it's a sound so, hadith. Next. Yeah, so I want to know... Uh, if, if one has, so I think most people, I don't know, but Allah knows best, uh, but most people have even a grain, uh, equivalent to a grain. So how to keep away from it and how, uh, and if one has, so uh, how do we um, uh, seek forgiveness from it? Okay. Okay? Yeah, and second question is, uh, so uh, it is prescribed to uh, make dua in sujood and before tasneem. Mm. So what I do is that, uh, so if the... Um, yeah, Imam says, uh, if Imam is in sujood, is in the sujood and uh, he says Allah Akbar. So I elongate a couple a couple, couple of seconds, making sujood, and uh, so I um, stand up after a couple of seconds. I delay the, I delay standing up. So is it correct or not? Same is with the tasleem. If, if the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, both the sides, so I... Um, Delay making uh, the same for mm. a couple of seconds and after that, uh, I do the tasneem. Is so it is correct or not? A couple of seconds, I can't really count a couple of seconds. By saying one, two, these are already two seconds. So you're not talking about a significant delay. If you're talking about a real delay, which may lead to that the imam indulges into the second rock and into the third rock. No, no, no. Uh, no. Before the Imam um, says um, any, any other um, okay. Allah over, so I, I stand up before that. But I, um, um, I don't miss any uh, of the sujood or the ruku. Okay. So w what's restricted is to line up with the Imam so that if he's rising up, you rise up with him. If he's going for sujood, you go with him. Uh, yeah, while he's yeah, talking. That's prohibited. That is prohibited. And what's also prohibited is to compete with him. But the right order is once the Imam rises up and you hear the complete word of uh, the takbir or Sami Allahu liman hamida or the taslim, then you proceed on. This is normal. No, 
sometimes the imam uh, makes a short uh, sujood so i can't make dua in sujood or before the meal so what shall i answer inshallah Okay, I thought you had three questions, but we already have uh, another caller, Brother Awal from Nigeria. We got only two from you, Amr. Awal from Nigeria, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum. Um, um, my question is, uh, when I was reciting Surah Al-Rahman, that's chapter 55, was that... Okay. Please try again, Brother Awan. Okay. So, I want to answer back whether it is true that touching a woman, even if this woman is your mother, your sister, your daughter, or your beloved wife, uh, would void your wudu or not. Who would answer us best in this regard? I believe it would be any of the wives or the daughters of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and we have a hadith in this regard in which Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her and others narrated that the Prophet وسلم, upon going to the masjid, he would kiss his wife. So he would have tahara and while he's going to the masjid, he would give his wife a farewell kiss and he would not make a new wudu. So what does this indicate? It indicates that touching a woman or even giving her a hug, I'm talking about a woman who's uh, lawful for you, or uh, a mahram would not invalidate your wudu. Or even if she's not your mahram, but I'm talking about what's lawful for you. Because it is not permissible for a man to touch a woman who's not lawful for him, nor is she uh, his mahram. Without a barrier, of course. Uh, but now, this hadith and other hadith indicate that the Prophet wasallam did not really have to make any wudu. So the opinion of the jumhur and the opinion of Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Mujahid and Akrima of at tabi'in and others uh, is more correct in this regard that the word awla mastumun nisa means or refers to the jima' rafath or having an intercourse with your spouse. That would require ghusl. In case that there is no water, you can resort to tayammum in a state and that would be sufficient. It does not refer to mere touch or the literal touch uh, which would require ablution uh, in, in, in order to lift the minor impurity. So uh, even if you are Shafi'i al-Madhab, you studied the Madhab of Imam uh, Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on him, you're not required to comply with this opinion because we have the more correct view. What's not accepted at all is when you shop for fatwa based on the easiest so following the concessions in different madhahib, the scholar said this is an act of rebelliousness. An act of rebelliousness. The Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, in the sound hadith, which is narrated by the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha Allah said, مَا خُيِّرَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنِ إِلَّا اخْتَارَ أَيْسَرَهُمَا مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِثْمًا Whenever the Prophet ﷺ had that choice, between two matters, he would always choose the easier one as long as it is not prohibited, as long as it is not disliked. So if I have two things, two views, both are sound, but one is easier. I would take the easier one if both are correct. When I have one which is relying on weak hadith or relying on mere conclusion or ishtihad, but now... Uh, a sound hadith or a better understanding in the light of the available evidences evolved, then I must abide with the sound opinion. It is not permissible to shop for the easier fatwas, like, and this is very common in, in the States, for instance. Uh, people, local people, uh, Muslims who are immigrants, they wait for visiting imams or shiukh. Somebody is coming from uh, Pakistan, from Egypt, from India, from Saudi. They ask the same set of questions, okay? And whenever any of the imams, so this question has been asked tons of times, but whenever any of them said, yes, it is halal, even if he's not fully aware of the complete picture, they say, well, imam so-and-so said it is halal, and now they author books and they publish it and they circulate the fatwa. Why? Because one out of 10 or 20 or 100 said it is halal. Maybe he's not fully aware. And uh, on the other hand, those who are very strict, 
they would take the view of any person who says it is haram for something which is maybe permissible, and they want to impose it on others. Neither this nor that is accepted. Wallahu ta'ala a'la wa'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rajah from Egypt, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Dr. Mahal? Alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. Doctor, I want to ask uh, some questions concerning the inheritance. Uh, the first uh, is about if the father... Inheritance, uh, Brother Rajab, inheritance. Present your questions in writing via email. Yeah, I want to ask about her inheritance. In writing. Send us an email. I'll be more than happy, inshallah, to reply to your email. Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Zakallah. Any other questions other than inheritance? Yeah, I want... Uh, if the father wants to divide uh, the inheritance during his, his uh, life... Rajab, I'm sorry, you didn't get me. If you have any other questions besides the inheritance inquiries... What? Do you have any other questions other than the inheritance? No, no, I think... Okay. As far as the inheritance, send us an email to ask at huda.tv. Thank you so much. Nusrat from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Nusrat from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Um, actually, I want to ask about uh, backbiting. I mean, this is a very big evil. I don't want to stay away from it. So, but the thing is, when I, Huda is my best companion so far in my whole life. So when I go back to my country, I always end up in this fitna. And I don't have Huda TV over there. So I, I don't, I've tried to search for a specific dua for uh, backbiting, but I really can't find it. I, and I've read many things that, you know, you can stay away from, but still, I mean, I, whenever I go back, I, I always end up with fitna. Let me so ask you, Sister Nusser, uh, Sister Nusser, you I just said... To, if there's any dua, like, which is close to which I can read and stay away from backbiting. Mm. And I think uh, blessed is the one who has good companions, good companions like Sheikhs and, you know, good people. So... I just want to know about how I can stay away from this evil. Do you really mean that Huda TV helps you to quit back Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank and you, Sister Musa. Barakallahu feek. Uh, Abu Safwan calling from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Great, alhamdulillah. Uh, Shaykh, I have a question regarding Hajj and Umrah. Hmm. Because uh, now it is uh, becoming more difficult, more expensive. Because uh, the everything, you know, everybody is reaping benefit out of this. Like hotels are very expensive, airlines are, uh, the tickets are expensive and all, everything. So the, generally there is a tendency among people, what they are saying, uh, why instead of, you know, spending money, uh, if you have once you have done for Umrah and Hajj and you have completed your foreign then better you should give this money to a poor rather than going every, you know, now and then or every Ramadan uh, for Umrah and every year for Hajj. Mm. So how you look at, uh, what would you like to advise us? Okay. Thank you, Abu Safwan. Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you. Brother Muhammad from the KSA, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. Well, I have one question. Uh, can someone go for uh, this uh, infallibility treatment uh, if a couple did not uh, conceive for eight years? Mm. That is IUI treatment. Yes, sure, why not? In addition to making dua and increasing the istighfar, seeking the proper means of medication, hoping that Allah would bless you with the righteous uh, child, is permissible. Okay. 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 And if, uh, uh, if that person is you, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and your spouse with the wonderful uh, child or children, inshallah. May Allah make it easy for you. And the best mean, trust me, the best uh, via, of course, the Quran statement, in addition to the experience, is increased making istighfar. And if you have a chance to perform Umrah or Hajj, even if you cannot afford it, you ask somebody to bring Zamzam water uh, for you. And before you drink Zamzam water while facing the Qibla, you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunim wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama. You can ask Allah in your own mother tongue uh, to bless you with the righteous uh, and healthy child. And I believe, inshallah, Allah will bless you with it. Sabah from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. 
وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته هاو كيف الحمد لله ثانك يو سيستر سابا فور اسكين اوكي شيف لايك يو ريمبر لاست تايم وين اي اسك يو ذات ذير از ا كومباني اوفر هير ويتش از بروفايدنج از شريا كومبلاينت لونز اند يو اي اسك يو ذات اي بريك ذا ذات شيف اي دو سو يو تول مي ذات فيرست ثينج از يو هاف تو فايند اوت ذات اف ذي هاف شير شيف اون بورد اند اف ذي هاف اور ار ذي جست ميس بيبل سو اي ونت اي هاد اند ميد ماي انكوايري and based on that inquiry what the information that they have a fatwa issued by some prominent scholars um i know some of them but i don't know the how authentic or whatever they are and i even asked them for their fatwa they do have a scholar on board and they have a fatwa which is issued by the sharia islamic sharia board of north america i see and they have put their fatwa to me now my question to you is shake i have read it sir that uh, should i go ahead and take this loan or not but me as a person i'm a little you know scared because i'm it's a it's a riba it's a riba that i'm trying to avoid if this they have somewhere inside their riba then i'm really scared inside that should I go or not so now my question to you is what should i do from here i have put one in my hand but i don't know i i'm not a scholar to understand the minute details of it So what should I do? You said it's approved by the Sharia Committee of North America. Is this what you said? Yeah, that's what they told me that there is a Sharia board and uh, the scholars uh, on that Sharia board are scholars from different banks all over the world and they have list, given me a list of the names. Out of that, I only recognize one name. Uh, who succeed and reaching besides uh, I wouldn't advise you I wouldn't advise you to mention names rather you can take this whole case and just uh, drop us an email to Amja uh, the Sharia Committee of North America and you can locate that online and uh, uh, an event like that will be very well known to us there or to the brothers who are on board and uh, you will have an immediate answer inshallah azza jal And inshallah, after you hang up, I'll, I'll extend the answer to everybody who is in a situation like that, what to do. Any other comments, Sister Saba? You can read it because I have complete trust in what you say to me. Oh, jazakallah khairan. I don't want you to have this complete trust in any human being. We, we teach here that we don't have this complete trust in any human being after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, If you're going to trust somebody and follow him strictly, follow those who pass the way because in al hayya la tu'man wa alayhi fitna. In al hayya la tu'man wa alayhi fitna. I have seen imams in the states who ended up giving up this magnificent task of giving da'wah, ended up possessing their own business, running their own stores, forgetting completely about the mission and the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them for. We are, his, uh, as human beings, are subject to tests and trials and fitna. We can change. And that's why we recognize men via the truth, not the other way around. We do not recognize the truth via men. Not everything that uh, me or anybody else say is correct. And Imam Shafi'i himself, may Allah have mercy on him, said, My statement is correct and true. And my opponent's statement is wrong. But my statement, while it is correct, and I believe it is correct, it may be wrong. And my opponent's statement may be correct. So there is even the slightest chance of error, in my opinion or others' opinions. And that's why we discuss it in the light of the Sharia. In the light of uh, the Sharia. If we are truth seekers, Maybe there is a misunderstanding for one hadith or one ayah. Nobody can claim that I know all the knowledge of the sharia ah, and I know the past and the prison and I know the current situation in, in non-Muslim countries. It's hard to comprehend all of that. And that's why we have the sharia ah committees. So we discuss amongst us uh, trials like that, big issues like that. When I was contacted by a very, very prominent and famous bank, and Islamic investment in America to be their advisor, I refused. Because it's a big responsibility. 
And once I say, yes, I'm responsible for everything and every transaction that is made by them, no matter how much they pay me, that would not waive the punishment if I fall into error. I will be entirely responsible. So please uh, go ahead and drop an email with the bank name, transaction name, and the scholars who are on board to Amja. Thank you so much. And Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, Brother Radwan from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, shukla. Thank you, Radwan. Uh, I have only one question. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to send uh, my wife to Umar uh, Hajj, inshallah, this time. Mm. And I'm uh, staying in Dubai, and I have to send her to India, and she will join with her uh, mother and father from India to. Uh, Saudi Arabia for mm. Hajj. Mm. So I have the uh, question whether she can go from Dubai to uh, India alone because I have the, my uh, uh, children. I have to take care of them, their schools and all these things. Yeah. Uh, how many times did your wife travel alone before that? Before, yes. She, she has traveled two, three times. The reason I ask because I know many of those who ask whether it's permissible to go for Hajj for a woman alone without a mahram or not, they don't mind traveling alone all the time. Even maybe a day before they called or after the phone call they will go. But the question is only pertaining Hajj, which is quite interesting because people when it comes to fulfilling uh, a ta'a, they care about perfecting it. I'm not criticizing this, but rather I'm saying that the ta'a brings about another ta'a. The obedience brings about another obedience. And the good deed leads to another good deed. So if people are traveling to attend a wedding, they would not even bother to ask because they know that the scholars said and the, 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 the sound hadith said no. So they would not ask. But when they are going for umrah or hajj or the funeral of uh, a very beloved person, they will ask whether it is okay or no. I wish this question is also presented upon going for vacation, going to attend a wedding or a graduation ceremony or any of these events. The answer is even for Hajj or Umrah, she requires a male mahram to accompany her, to accompany her. Now she's going to India first and from India that she's going to... Uh, perform Hajj along with her parents. So the journey from India to performing Hajj is valid 100%. But she needs to have a mahram to go along with her from Dubai to India. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said in many sound hadith, since he said it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and in the last day to travel alone without a male mahram. هذا والله تعالى أعلى وأعلم. Brother Ridwan, from United Arab Emirates, thank you so much. We have another red one from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, red one. Yeah, I wanted to ask this question since Ramadan, but I couldn't get to. Uh, my question is, my first question is, um, uh, when fasting, day time fasting, I get a lot of faith in my mouth, which maybe I'm um, with my... Uh, I'm driving in KSA. You so the one that I'm driving, I will go inside the mall with her because she's old. Maybe the things that she buy, I help her to carry it. So when uh, in Ramadan, day time when fasting like this, I get a lot of faith in my mouth, which I cannot get somewhere to pour it out. So maybe she will ask me some questions that is like it has choked me that I have to to her directly you get that no so i will swallow i didn't get it Rudwan, i'm sorry i yeah. didn't get it if you can I, just I, i'm saying that day time when fasting day time in ramadan yeah what about it i get a lot of feet you get a lot of what i'm feet, sorry feet. a oh. lot of feet uh Okay, I'll try, I'll try to review this, inshallah, after the break. But do you have any other question other than that? Yeah, I have another question um, regarding um, 
Yeah, I hear you, Brother Rudwan. Go on, please. Yeah, performing Hajj. Last year, I get a chance to go and perform Umrah. But I did not get a chance to go to perform Hajj. And maybe, inshallah, this year, maybe I will get a chance or I wouldn't get a chance. So I want to uh, know, is there anything uh, different? Like, um, uh, I did not go Hajj last year, and maybe this year I will get to go. Is there anything different about that? Difference between what? Performing Umrah and Hajj? Yeah. I did not get Hajj last year. I okay. get only Umrah. Okay. And have you performed Hajj before at all? Thank you, Brother Ridwan. Okay, brothers and sisters, we'll uh, pass you to take a short break, and inshallah, after the break, we'll get back uh, to you. So stay tuned. <laughs> So this is something that you have to point out to the to them in the Bible. It's something which is, I think, very highly needed by the youth, which is uh, staying firm on the truth. This is just one of the greatest examples for me of how to control your anger. Within the framework of, of being the cleanest religion, the cleanest jurisprudence, and in the meantime, uh, uh, the kindest religion to animals. Watch Let's Talk with Khalil Amanet as he interviews guests and discusses a variety of topics, everything from youth issues to religious issues. Join us here on Hoda TV. Oh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his mercy, for his messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. If a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, truthfully, asking for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive. We have as Muslims a duty, and that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for. And the Prophet sallallahu was sent to all mankind. So the ummah or the people of the Prophet sallallahu are all mankind since the time of the Prophet sallallahu till the day of judgment. Why waste our life without getting to know every verse in the Qur'an, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, Brother Hassan from Nigeria had a very important question pertaining the idda for a widow. He says, if a woman loses her husband, is it okay to spend the mourning period in another house in order to avoid being alone? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah in verse number 234, وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرٍ وَعَشْرًا This ayah indicated that the mourning period for a woman to mourn the death of her husband is four months and ten days. The Sunnah explained that she would be required to stay that period, the mourning period, four months and ten days, in the house in which her husband passed away. So she will not be permitted to leave that house or move to another house before the mourning period is over, except for a necessity. And when I say she's not allowed to move away, it doesn't mean that she's not allowed to go out at all, but she can go out uh, to shop around during the day and come back before the evening. If she's the only person who can do that, and if she's taking care of herself uh, or going to her 
uh, to do what's necessary during the day and uh, she must come back to spend the evening and the night in her house. In case that we have an older woman who's been widowed and no one is to look after her, children are living far away, and she cannot assist herself by herself, or she's sick on medication or handicap, this is a legitimate excuse that can make the children to take the mother to live with either one of them and spend the idda in this house. But if she's capable of taking care of herself, then she must stay in that house. Uh, feeling lonely and being sad isn't the excuse which would allow her uh, to move to another house or to travel. Wallahu ta'ala, a'la wa a'la. Sister Wafa uh, from Egypt called earlier today and asked about uh, argument and uh, what's correct and what's wrong. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa warned us a great deal against al-jidal. And he said what destroyed nations before us is a false argument. To the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about hajj, al-hajj ashurun ma'lumat, faman farada fihinna al-hajj, fala rafatha, wala fusuqa, wala jidala fil hajj. It's like it's a human uh, evil trait that they get sucked into a conversation that leads to an argument, and so on. The false or the empty argument, which is not for the sake of revealing the truth, leads to the following. Uh, everybody, every opinionated person believes that his opinion should be superior and would not accept the opinion of others. That doesn't happen in a true argument where people are seeking the truth, like the old imams the true scholars of fiqh, when there is an argument, this is a productive argument. Al-Jidal is mentioned in the Qur'an in two different ways. One which is praiseworthy and one which is condemned. The praiseworthy one, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ أُدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ and look at it, it was the last stage of giving da'wah. The methodology of da'wah is all summarized in the Qur'an in this verse. Call on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and your followers unto the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way of your Lord. إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ with wisdom وَالْمَوْعِضَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ and the good admonition. But sometimes argument is required. وَفْدُ نَصَارَ نَجْرَان And some Jews came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to discuss with him about Islam and whether he's a prophet or not. This conversation extended into argument and by the end the argument reached its utmost in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged them. فَإِنْ حَاجُّكَ If they still argue with you claiming that they have the proof فَقُلْ تَعَالًا After the truth has been very obvious to them then فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبَنَاءَنَا وَأَبَنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبِتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ Which is a mubahala. We talked about it before. To that extent. But arguing for the sake of something that's not productive, it will not help at all. And this is what's happening and what's going on. Everybody in the Middle East currently has become a politician. Every person has become an opinionated person. Everybody became an expert. People would sit for hours to discuss whether this is right and whether this is wrong. And their views are not going to change anything anyway. It's a waste of time. I would rather seize this time and this uh, precious time which is wasted in belying each other, arguing with each other. And by the end, nobody buys the opinion of another, uh, either to consult an expert or utilize this time in studying something that is useful whether in religion, in science, or even in politics. We may, we may understand our present time when we get to study the history. History is repeating itself. Everybody has become an expert nowadays and they don't know that there are others who are working secretly in order to steal the Arab Spring from its people, in order to impose their agendas. If you ever think that the West or America would be happy to spread democracy in the Middle East, I assure you that is not true. Because democracy will bring people that the West would not approve nor like. So that's why 
there are very weird and strange movements and people who have been funded and these are uh, official reports organizations and individuals who have been funded in order to spread mischief in order to create a chaos in order to delay the free democratic or so-called democratic election whether in Egypt or in Tunis and you will see tomorrow in Libya I would rather I myself as a very weak person I seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I say and I mentioned that in the last Friday sermon إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدًا فَمَهِّلِ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْهِلْهُمْ رُوَيْدًا They plot and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans and Allah's plan would join their plots وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ So the seekers of knowledge know that the only help is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we called on, on, unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us get, get rid of the dictators. And Allah delivered. We called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to free us from them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered. So why would we think that we're so intelligent and invisible and so genius that we can do all on our own with the help of this or that without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We need to return back to this fact that if you ever ask, you should ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many of the youth who have been misled. Facebook is a great tool. Twitter is a great tool. Internet communication is wonderful. But sometimes when somebody is empty-minded, and all of a sudden he believes himself he has a role to play in the society, he gets sold out simply by reading a message from here or there without knowing the truth. Without knowing that this entire universe should be run by its creator. And no one knows how to run it better than its creator. That means we have to go back to the Sharia. All these parties who are opposing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you sit with these guys, they literally challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They literally object to the Quran and they deny the Sunnah. And they claim that the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was only good back then. And it won't be able to manage and fix our life in today's world. And when they discuss, they say, we would like to be like the West, but the West wouldn't like you to be like them. The West would like to maintain your country's inferior, and its people inferior, so they can keep sucking your blood, getting your wealth. All these tyrant rulers have been supported by the West and the foreign intelligence and the current regimes from the Libyan dictator to the Egyptian one, to the Tunisian, to the Syrian. All the innocent people who had been arrested and shipped in cargo planes to these countries to be tortured, and some of whom died, all of that was signed by the leaders of these countries. George W. Bush and current presidents are all involved in that. Not because they read the WikiLeaks, but because this is a fact. So since when these guys would hope and pray that we will enjoy democracy. And I guess, I, I remember I, sh I shared with you before what I say to uh, Dr. Ron Paul, the Republican uh, presidential uh, nominee uh, in the last election. And I said, you guys wouldn't like to spread democracy in Egypt. Because democracy, the vast majority of people are religious by nature. We tried secularism. We tried liberalism, we tried communism, we tried everything and we failed. Would you please let us once try the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Would you please leave us alone and let's try to elect our rulers and our representatives freely, without your influence, without your money? This is a message I'm sending, this is not, uh, I did not uh, get away from the question of Sister Wafa. But this is a message to the youth. You got to understand that. If you want to argue, then argue. How can we bring our countries and our people back on track? The track which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for us. as al mustaqim The way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drew on the sand once. And he quoted the ayah. أَنَّ هَذَا صُرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ فتفرق بكم عن سبيل السلام عليكم أم عبد الرحمن كيسائي السلام عليكم 
alaikum salam wa barakatuh. I have two questions. The first question is, um, um, I really enjoy the program that you used to have about, um, by Dr. Zaglou Najjar, Science and Quran. And uh, I was wondering if it's possible if you can somehow send him uh, a message that it would be good to have more programs like that. They were very interesting. Okay. And the second question is, um, is it permissible to pray in Jama back of um, a boy that's 11 years old and an imam who's 11 years old? Uh, that's all. Okay. Umar um, Abdurrahman, as far as any program such as uh, programs by Dr. Zaglul and Agar, uh, Science and Quran, etc., we would love to have these programs uh, ongoing. Would love to have that live, but everything costs money, and that's why we urge and we beg the viewers to support the channel in order to air and record and produce more beneficial programs. Otherwise, uh, overnight you can find Huda TV of air simply because it is run by your help and support, obviously by the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, which He inspires you guys to assist and help uh, the channel. Uh, the, 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 we only have Huda TV. The, the entire Ummah has two or three Islamic channels in English. And we all know that the channel which is 24-7 and offering various programs is Huda TV. So the Ummah has to uh, get together in order to uh, sponsor and support these programs. Wallahi would love to have a new program every day, but we're just lacking uh, fund. Um, uh, and uh, Sister Rafa also asked about uh, Hajj and issuing a lot of fatawa in Hajj. Um, whenever I go for Hajj and somebody asks me a question, and if I'm not certain 100%, I would not hesitate to say, I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh, you're, you're Dr. Muhammad Salah, you don't know? Oh, I don't know. Why not? Because number one, I don't know the person. If I give him an answer, I make it to head. And my answer is wrong, because these are, uh, the, 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 mashallah, the pilgrims will make up questions, even some hypothetical questions. Very, very strange. So when you give an answer, and this guy leaves, and he disappears, you figure out that you were wrong. What are you going to do? And this guy tells others, and he goes to his group and say, the sheikh said this and this and that. You're responsible. So what about if you don't know anything about fiqh to begin with? Be careful. You're going for Hajj to wash off and remit your sins. Do not involve yourself in a big sin of giving a fatwa that you do not. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Liban from Egypt. How are you doing, Sheikh? Uh, alhamdulillah, shukrullah. Uh, Sheikh, I have uh, two questions. Yeah, please. Uh, my first question is regarding, uh, you know, basically in the masjid, how, you know, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there you get 27 times more ajr yes. praying in the masjid. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes with life, like, Say if I'm on the bus or I go a little bit late, I'll pray in a jama'ah maybe 10-15 minutes after the prayer just finished, but it's still in the masjid. So I was wondering if you still get the same amount of ajr, because I miss praying with the jama'ah. Mm. And also my second question is, basically, I'm from Canada and I live in a small town, and um, there's basically one little place that offers halal food. And um, I remember hearing basically on your show about um, eating basically from the people's foods, people of the book, but like, um, I'm not sure if it's halal, if like there's a place that has halal food that's offering it, but say if it's on the other side of the city, it could, like, and I'm with friends, we're here, like, I mean, I don't know if I should just not eat, or it's just a, I'm just very confused on that topic. Liban, as far as your second question, inshallah, we'll answer it next episode, we ran off time already. Uh, as far as the first one, that you and your intention, you did your best, you exerted your maximum effort, you exhausted the means, but you were in the bus. This is not your problem. You tried your best, so when you enter the masjid, you get the reward of 27 times. But obviously, the first jama'ah harvests the greatest reward, and the second jama'ah gets a lesser reward, and so on. Somebody who's stuck in a transportation, and I don't know if you're calling from Egypt or where, where the transportation is something that is very, very hectic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pardon you because this is something that is out of your control, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Keep your duty to Allah as much as you can afford. Well, and this is how much we can afford today, brothers and sisters, and I promise, inshallah, if we live till next Sunday, I will begin by answering your 
pending questions. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. I leave you in the care of Allah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.